<laughs> awesome. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Contra Commons first installation of on site. Uh, this is um, I mean, our first one is going to be with Aria Brownell. She's got a show coming up here at Contra Common, and we're super excited to share with everyone uh, kind of what she's got going in this time of uh, pre-show prep, you know? Um, so, uh, Aria, do you want to tell us how things are going? How are the nerves in your studio <laughs> right now? We want to hear Yeah, I'm, yeah, definitely pretty anxious about getting this painting done. Um, but it's something I'm really excited about having done for um, for March 6th for the opening, even if it means I work on it until March 5th at like 2 a.m. Um, yeah, and so we have a, a camera on me and my palette, and this is the section I'll be working on, and it probably will not get anywhere close to, to done in the time <laughs> that we do this. But yeah. So, so yeah, so I'll be working on this pretty meta section of uh, painting a painting palette while we do this. this is so and I'm going to repeat a bunch of things that I say because obviously I'm like crazy nervous. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do great. It's going to be so fun. I am really bad about not being able to like complete sentences as I'm painting. So um, I'll <laughs> totally. try to distract if that's, if that's the route we're going down. Um, oh, so yeah. you've, been painting, you've kind of been painting all day though, right? Like you've been here for a couple of hours. Yeah, so I started, so you can see on my palette, I kind of, I, I dug in a little bit, but I've only been painting for maybe like an hour or two. So the paint, the palette still looks kind of presentable. You can see where like I have like, you know, my Roy G. Biv is still pretty visible. <laughs> After a while, it starts to be pretty muddy. We mm -hmm. actually, I kind of like that because then like colors become like neutral, yeah. um, which helps because I usually use really bright colors and sometimes it's uh, too much. Um, and I've been, I've been working on a section kind of higher up. I might be able to just like do this a little bit. Working on this section here today, but we're gonna do kind of a more clear cut, visible, section for the video um, because I'm this part is dry this part's wet and all of uh, this up here is wet so um, I kind of do this thing where I rest my pinky so this part will be easy for for camera because like I can like paint here and rest my pinky and then move over this way like that <laughs> very cool I guess I'm like I'm gonna start there's my dad <laughs> hi dad <laughs> There we go. I think I got the video stopped. Um, we, cool. yeah, if you want to go for it, it'll be super rad. How do you, what's your, what's your brush of choice? Let me, let me see those brush tips. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, I like, I like brights a lot, but I, I, I destroy them pretty quickly. So um, I'll, I'll show you like a, I buy a lot of brushes because I, um, it's in here. I, I destroy them within like a couple hours. So I've got a lot of like round points, but then I've got a lot of bright, um, kind of small ones. <laughs> These get destroyed within three hours. These are my new ones. So like I, I save them for, you know, when I've really destroyed all of my brushes. These are this is more like what my brushes look like after, after using them. And, and I still use these kind of cruddy ones because like the way that they're frayed is nice for, scrubbing and I do a lot of scrubbing mm -hmm. but yeah so I don't know if you can see my computer yeah we can kind of see it in your main in your main camera oh cool mm -hmm. great yeah yeah so I have the image open on here on my computer and my computer has kind of like storage issues so sometimes it um the image will close like kind of crap out but for the most part I get like a pretty zoomed in like section of what I'm going to paint and I'll just kind of just go for it awesome. and yeah I think I'm just going to start painting and then if there are any questions um I'll maybe try to answer them yeah so for those of you um hanging out watching our little uh first installation of Contra Common on site feel free to type any questions in the chat um we are happy to answer them while she goes super exciting also just a quick pro tip i'm not sure um if i was able to actually set it to where everyone is in grid view or not rather than speaker view but if you go to grid view you can actually get three views 
of Aria Studio right now. Um, so you can really see up close her palette and what she's painting. So um, check out that grid view instead of speaker view. Ooh, you can see my hand. I feel like that's cool. So I'm grabbing like a pinkish white right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty dope. Like honestly, the palette, the palette camera is great. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and I, I feel like it's important to mention that I, um, I do like two underpaintings before I like really go into into detail. So you can see like this this whole section is painted, but it it's um, like with more broad strokes and kind of blockier colors, and and then I go in with like a white to you know bring out everything that I want to bring out. And that's, that's the most important part of my process is a lot of time and a lot of layers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. So this painting is uh, from a picture I took of our coffee table in, in Yonkers when we were living there. Pretty messy. I kind of like the, the idea that it, um, I don't know, it kind of tells like a story, obviously, like every painting does, but in a very like literal way, because like each item is like some kind of waste left behind. Um, I'm using my my black mixture, which is is just it's alizarin crimson, or actually just permanent alizarin because alizarin crimson is bad, but permanent alizarin and uh, Prussian blue, and I mix them together. And it makes kind of like a black, and that's kind of like honestly, I, I put so much alizarin crimson and Prussian blue in my palette just as much as like I have white because I use so much of this like dark blackish purplish color. I think black is like I, I just avoid it because um, it doesn't mix well with other colors. But if I mix this with like any other color, it kind of scales the color like chromatically. So like if I were to mix it with this, this red, it makes the red just like a darker version of that red without making it like kind of muddy. I feel like I'm just gonna like <laughs> blather on <laughs> this whole time. All right, but yeah, so we're painting a painting palette today. Very meta, like you said, using the palette. Yeah. Palette, love it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I always keep, yeah, I mean, I guess I always keep my palette and my, my computer to my right, obviously, so it's easy to reach. Mm -hmm. And this is a, um, let me see if this works. Where's my palette camera? This is a, Gam Gamblin's Neo McGilt, and it's really transparent, but it kind of makes the paint like really smooth, and it, and it actually kind of makes it dry pretty quickly. So I use that as my medium. It's my I've gone through a lot of different phases, but this one's my favorite. It's kind of like matte too, so like the paint doesn't dry glossy, which I really bothers me because <laughs> like taking photos is hard and. I should, I like, I always like matte better than glossy. So this is kind of a step away from things that I've seen you do in the past. I see that you've kind of focused on portraits uh, and this is more of a, a setting still very much like in the home and of, of a person. Um, what, yeah. what kind of got you into this? I know your other, your last big um, two piece painting is the same way. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I kind of like, I, I like the idea, like kind of how you mentioned about having it be about people, but not um, explicitly a, a picture of a person, just the evidence of person or, <laughs> um, yeah, like kind of evidence of like a, a, a space that was lived in kind of was intriguing to me. And, and I feel like it's still a figurative painting to me in a way um and it is kind of weird because like I do handle skin a lot differently than I handle like objects um so it's always a little strange for me to see the way that um painting an item comes out versus painting a person 
I feel like it almost looks like a different, like kind of like painter made it to me. But um, yeah, unconsciously, unconsciously, I feel like I'm just, I don't know. Um, Sorry, I have my hi, Penny. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, like, unconsciously, I just, like, I handle, like, objects different than people. And I'm not, I, you know, I'm not mad with the way it came out, comes out. My last painting I made, I, it, it only has one leg in it as evidence of a human body, and the rest of it is just, like, items on a table as well. And I was kind of pretty excited by, by the way it came out. So I was, like, pretty confident I could do it again. Let's <laughs> we'll just see if it gets done in time. I think it's working really well. I, I'm shocked at how quickly this painting has come together. When when did you start it and how many hours do you think you've put into it so far? I know when I yeah. was earlier, it looked like you said it was about a third of the way done. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Well, no, well, it's probably it's a little more. maybe two thirds of the way done, but like a third of the the physical space is like at its kind of almost complete stages. Um, I think I started this at the end of January. I'd planned on starting it kind of in the beginning, but we had to go to our hometown. And and then also once I did start this, obviously Texas lost power for a week. So I was out of the studio during that time. And February has 28 days, which is crazy. <laughs> so all the time I thought I had to work on this, um, I really didn't. <laughs> So I'm just kind of like doubling down and I've been here like pretty much every day and I stay really late, like one or two in the morning to, to work on this because I'm, I'm very eager to get it done. I, I, I'm not competitive, but with myself, if I assign a goal, I'm like pretty adamant about, about doing it. Um, I'm like competitive with myself almost. Sure. So talk to us about this show. What, uh, what other things of yours might we see in there? Or um, how, what was the inspiration? The show's called Something Like Yesterday, and it's a group show or a duo, a duo show with uh, Sydney Westenkow. How did you guys mm -hmm. get paired together? Kind of what was your thought process there? Yeah, um, we actually both make work about memory. Um, and in a way, we both kind of make portraiture um Kelsey introduced me to her and she's really cool she makes like soft sculptures and she makes them out of like dis uh discarded clothing um and and other kind of like household like fabric items stitched together in in like almost like bodily forms and like you said I I mostly paint like figurative work I mostly paint people um but so we had that in common already and then when I read her artist statement and about how like she paints about memory and, um, you know, disillusionment, portraiture, like self-portraiture, like finding like your like self in things. I was like, wow, this is very similar to my artist statement. And yeah, when we hooked up, I kind of was like, this is like such a great like match. I feel like is, I think it'll look like really good together. And also her, her soft sculptures are really colorful. And like the clothing she uses is often like super like multicolored and stitched together kind of like yeah with like different like odd shapes which I feel like kind of looks good next to this like painting that I have just like a ton of random items in next to each other I feel like they'll complement each other really well um but yeah it's March 6th it's gonna be awesome I think <laughs> because I'm biased uh and yeah we mostly wanted to make work that yeah, it's about, like, memory, and I kind of always think about, like, the idea of memory, and, like, how it changes, so my memory is terrible, and when I paint from a photo, I'm given a memory back, in a way, so I have this, this coffee table that I'm painting right now, and it tells me that I used to <laughs> use a spray bottle to like, you know, spray Susan our cat when she was bad. And I apparently used to leave like my painting palette and everything all over the floor. Like these socks are evidence of my fiance, Dan. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like giving me a memory, but it's something that I'm actually like 
actively rewriting as I paint it. So by like working through the image, it's like a whole new memory every time I make a stroke. Like I, I don't remember why, you know, I left the palette on the ground, but yeah, you know, I could tell myself like, oh, these this is the palette I use for the color studies in college or something like that. And I, I think it's really interesting with photos for me specifically how you know, the memory of them can, can sometimes mislead you. Um, and when I paint a, a, a picture, it, it comes out kind of with different intent than what the photo was actually of. Um, whether it be like uh, somebody swimming, kind of like being more like depressing than, than a fun sunny day or kind of a messy table in, in our old apartment, being more like nostalgic and weepy. <laughs> you know, versus just like messy, messy young adults. I don't know. I think it's interesting to repaint the, the picture and, and the memories you're, you're given. Uh, that was a really long winded way of saying um, our show is about memory <laughs> and it is March 6th. <laughs> Kelsey in the chat. She's very excited to see it. Yay. I'm really excited to show you all this painting. Like I'm honestly, uh, I'm just going to be like really excited to get it done. I think I, I like, I have fun making paintings, but then when I like, when I assign myself a goal to finish something in time, like I'm like overdrive. Like I just like my whole life is like, I go home and I think about the painting until I can come back and keep working on it. So it's a little intense. Gonna just oh yeah. And this is chip to clean. I was about to say, yeah, if I make a mistake, have like a thing of q-tips and I, I end up having to use it a lot to get like lines right and I'll just kind of make a swipe um especially because the part I paint on for my final layer is usually dry anyway so q-tip won't really smudge it so I have a ton of those I buy them at Costco and they're paper they're not plastic q-tips <laughs> if anyone's worried <laughs> Holly Serna in the chat is asking uh do you use glazing in your painting process yeah I mean we, yeah, it's funny. We were just talking about this. Um, I don't glaze my paintings after, but the, uh, the Neo McGilp, I guess that looks like a pile of nothing, but the Neo McGilp is a kind of like a glaze. I mean, it's the medium I use. I feel like I've, I've watched Gamblin do, um, like webinars before where they show somebody using Neo McGilp as a glaze, which I think is strange, but I like to mix it in with the paint. I think it makes for a better medium and I think you can use any medium as a glaze, but yeah, it makes it pretty matte. And I think when it finishes, it's, it's like a nicer, uh, brighter color. And I, I, I don't kind of, I don't really fuck with like over the top, like varnishes or glazes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just put that gambling Neo McGilp in the chat if anyone's looking for it later. Um, Holly's oh, nice. interested to know, is it fast drying and uh, do you prime your surfaces with anything? Oh yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I first prime my canvas. I use linen. I use portrait linen because the texture is very fine, finely like threaded. And I, I, for this big one, I did eight layers of gesso, but for like an 18 by 24, I do you know, usually six layers unless I'm feeling ambitious and I'll do eight. The most I've ever done was like a really big canvas. I did like 10 layers of gesso, but I also don't want it to be like, you know, too like gloppy. But anyway, I do like six layers of gesso for this one. I did eight and then I sand it down for like a goddamn hour. It takes forever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I sand it down until it's kind of like smooth. There's a little bit of texture for the, but for the most part, like when I rub my brush on it, it's not scratchy. It just like comes out smoothly. That's the, the surface I'm looking for. And then I, Oh, for the Neo McGilp. Yeah. It's pretty fast drying. I'd say like I painted this section, um, maybe three or four, maybe four days ago. And it's like completely dry. I painted this. I wonder if you can see maybe my fingers here. I painted this, uh, yesterday, last night. And it's, Actually, it's pretty dry, <laughs> but uh, some parts of there's more paint, it might be kind of sticky. But yeah, it's fast drying, which is like a big part of why I, I like to use it. I think I answered all the questions. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. 
<laughs> cool. <laughs> but yeah. For our guests, if y'all have any questions, please pop them in the in the chat. We've got a few of our studio members here at Contra Common. So Aria, you're our social media director. How has that mm -hmm. been for you? Yeah. Like, put I, you the hey, tell me about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a secret, like, evaluation. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's dope. I like it. I, I, I think Instagram is, like, a great, um, like, marketing kind of uh tool and and just a good a good community tool i think we've reached a lot of artists in austin like we recently had that open call for uh soft sculpture and we had like 60 or more submissions which would never have been anywhere close to that uh without social media i think it was a great way to get things across and, and then also we can share work from our artist members which i think is the most important thing to kind of have like visibility for artists because we're we're all poor we're all just trying to do the same thing you know it's nice to like get out there i i like it i'm as i demonstrated to you taylor just like moments ago with this zoom thing i'm not the most technically savvy person <laughs> we, <laughs> were take, I, we had it figured out i'm just saying you did <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no it was yeah so i'm not great at that i do end up figuring it out eventually um but i can take a good picture and i think i can write a good caption because i'm a very impatient person the only thing i always say it's like the only thing i'm patient with is painting and everything else in life i just have no patience for um so i know on instagram when i look at a post i'm looking for it to be like concise um amongst other things so i think i can I, i've been able to make pretty much like eye-catching ways of like posting things on our instagram that i think have been like pretty effective because i just assume everyone has a short attention span like me so <laughs> um lee is wondering what your favorite brand of oil paint is do you do you use gambling or do you use something else yeah i, I exclusively exclusively uh use gambling i just uh it's i think it's like a really nice paint and it's affordable um and like i said i did like a webinar before like they always offer like some kind of class that's just like a free zoom webinar that i don't know i think they're a great company and they're like owned by uh, i'm gonna get this wrong but they're not like a huge corporation like people like a real human being owns gambling <laughs> it's like robert gamlin or something i feel like i'm making that up but either way like there's definitely their paint is like there's what there's definitely a person for sure yeah it's like some guy some, some couple maybe i don't know but they're great their paints are like very um saturated mm -hmm. kelsey says they when have I was in really great environmental initiatives too and support their local community as well yes yeah. exactly i use this like um wonder what camera I should get this in. There we go. I use safflower oil to clean my brushes versus like even their Gamsol, which is like their um, mineral spirits, is actually a lot better for the environment than like terpenoid or something like that. But the safflower oil I like and it's, I mean, like I have like beauty products, like skincare products that have safflower oil in them. So if it's good enough for my skin and also can clean my brushes, I feel like it's a great like, I don't know. They do have very environmentally conscious like and like student conscious prices <laughs> i've had to call them before at um one of my other jobs and um they were uh, i was i was helping with a munsell color theory class and uh mm -hmm. the instructor was um really specific about the 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 types of pigments in the paints and we we called gambling and they just like told us exactly what wow yeah <laughs> like they, they were like here's how you make our paint but they were like this is everything that's in it um and it was really cool that you could just you can just call the lab at gambling and yeah. like talk to the talk to the mixer so that's awesome you just called like hello <laughs> i just love the idea 
I called Hello, it's Garrison. And I was like, I've got a question about like the, ingre- I don't remember what I said, but they were like, oh, we'll just transfer you to the lab. And they just did it. Like they just let me, t- his name was Ulysses, like Ulysses at Gamblin, a homie. So if y'all have questions for Gamblin. That's amazing. Don't be afraid. I, yeah, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty cool. And I've used a bunch of other like Winston, Windsor and Newton and, um, I mean, in college, I just did, like, the Utrecht brand because I was poor. But <laughs> gambling is great. And look at these colors on this palette. They're so bright. Like, they're so saturated. Like, they're very, like, very true to their hue. Yeah. I, I realize now, like, I'm <laughs> not going to get a whole lot of this painting done in this uh, webinar. I've got uh, two questions in the chat. I've got one from Holly wondering, uh, do you ever experience physical problems with your paint cleaners like Gamsol? I'll let you answer that one first. Okay. And we'll go with the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Gamsol, I, we, it was required that we use that in college and I didn't. I used terpenoid instead, which was against the rules, even though we had one of those like big bins because I used Gamsol for like a couple weeks and I kept getting this rash on my face and I didn't know what it was from. And I'm just like, I just ended up being like allergic to something in Gamsol. And so when I stopped using it, I stopped getting the rash on my face. Um, and I get that rash because like I'm touching my face. <laughs> like I just like always touch my face. But um, yeah, I actually, I had issues with that. I'm pretty sure it's like, it's relatively safe. I just am allergic to everything. Like you can ask my fiance, like I break out from... Like if there's an unwashed vegetable I eat or like if there's like rose in some kind of skincare product. So yeah, I had issues with physical issues with Gamsol, um, which is not to say it's not a good product. I'm sure it is. But yeah, in college I had to lie and tell everybody, yeah, I'm using that. Um, yeah, I was a studio assistant and like the, like the, I was a teaching assistant and the studio assistant, meaning I was the one who like went cleaned all the rags and stuff like that. And I still lied about that. I'm like looking back, I'm like, that's so dumb. But that's the only product that I only personally can't like vouch for because of my dumb, my dumb skin. We have another personal question in the chat. Uh, the question is from Robert. Why doesn't your nose work like most humans? Is it just a useless <gasps> accessory? It is. Thanks for asking, dad. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is. Like my father, I have a deviated septum and my nose doesn't do things that I want it to do, like breathe and, uh, you know, not snore. And yeah, so unfortunately, it's just a dumb accessory in my face that doesn't do a whole lot. Um, but yeah, I, I, I put that in my, my, my caption on my, my post because like, I think I'm trying not to do it now, like consciously, but when I paint, I wonder if I can capture it. I normally notice myself with this face, <laughs> with like an open mouth, like studious, but like gaping, bad. Actively breathing in all that terpenoid you don't use anymore. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm a mouth breather, and that's like definitely a derogatory term to me. <laughs> But uh, I can't help it. I just, I breathe out of my mouth. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow, we're going to be lucky if we get like five of these rectangles done. <laughs> You're hard. <laughs> So how did you, how early, how old were you when you knew you wanted to become an artist? Let's start with that. Let's word a full sentence. Go team. (laughs) Go team. (laughs) Interesting. I don't know. I feel like after I was in college for two years as a painter. (laughs) um, Yeah, I guess my mom is a painter and her mom is a painter and sculptor and yeah, when I was young, I feel like I turned down all the opportunities that my mom gave me to, like, learn how to paint. Like, every time she, like, asked me if I wanted her to teach me, I was like, no, mom, of course not. Ugh. But I uh, did my own kind of, like, 
you know, like every kid for the most part. I drew and I drew a lot in high school and I kind of wanted to do it a little bit before college and I applied to an art school and I got in uh, with my portfolio. They have you draw, I'm sure you had to do the same thing, Taylor, but they have you, you know, draw a still life of a certain type and, and then like a, a self portrait and stuff like that. Um, and then I got into art school and then like two years went by and I was like, you know what? I like this. this I could do this. So <laughs> I kind of like, I couldn't do anything else. Like in, uh, painting was the only thing I kind of felt confident doing. Um, but I had like no interest in my life until I was like 21. I was just very like, um, very kind of lost. And I found, I found something that I actually cared about, which was really cool and very rare for a young adult these days, I think. So, yeah, I'd say I was, I'd say I was like, you know, fucking 20 years old when I was like, yeah, I could be a painter. I could, I, I could do this forever. That's so interesting. I would have thought that you had been like, I don't know, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. That was not an answer I was expecting from you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like I always have like painted and uh, drawn. Yeah. Drawed. <laughs> yeah. Drawn. drawn. I've always painted in, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, in terms of like being serious about it, I was a very mm -hmm. not serious person. So <laughs> it took a lot to pique my interest back yeah. then. Did you have a favorite class when you were in art school? I guess I don't know if you had any, like, I don't know how your classes were like assigned or like, yeah. whatever. Yeah, I'd say definitely, yes. I had certain um, professors that were incredible. And it, it wasn't exactly like a painting class, but I'd say my favorite class was, uh, it was called Field Trips. And it was required for all graduating um, painting majors. And um, our professor was Sarah Walker, who is an incredible, like seriously incredible artist. And it was every single Friday and our school was right outside uh, the city in, in New York. It was in, a, well, it was SUNY Purchase. It was in a town called Purchase, which is right by like Port Chester in the Westchester area. And um, yeah, so we would, we'd either drive or I lived next to the train station in, in Mount Vernon when I was living in Yonkers. It was like a five minute walk and we'd meet somewhere in the city and then we'd go around like the Chelsea district or somewhere in Brooklyn and we would go to like all the free galleries so whatever show was open and sometimes we'd hit like honestly like 10 galleries in one in one day because the, the class was around four hours but sometimes it went longer like we'd meet at 12 and then we'd like stop looking at galleries at like seven and it was just like so that was like my favorite thing about living in New York was getting to see like free gallery shows all the time and everywhere and nothing was ever old like they cycled out like super quickly and yeah I definitely miss that <laughs> but uh New York in itself I, I I didn't love living there but yeah that was my favorite class and and I'd also say my uh the first time I did like I did like a print class I think it was just called monotype something like that some kind of class in the print shop and it was um, in my senior year and I had just been introduced to, to prints and I was like oh shit I should have been doing this the whole time like <laughs> I had so much fun in it but I'm glad I got to do at least any of that so yeah yeah field trips was great Ooh, Holly with the good questions what is the worst or silliest artist advice or critique that you've ever received Oh God, I feel like throughout my entire time in college, every critique I got was the worst. <laughs> I, I was pretty like clueless and didn't really know what I was doing or have any kind of aim. So, I mean, as, as nice as my classmates were, my professors didn't always love my lack of ambition in my first two years and until I got my shit together, like in my last two years of college. Um, okay, so worst critique. Worst or um, let me see who's on here right now. I don't <laughs> want to offend anybody. Okay, we're good. 
Okay, cool. <laughs> like, uh, we did like, I, I did a uh, forest, really amazing crit, group crit, which was like really incredible. But I showed a piece that was finished and someone was like, oh, this like, um, this angle is off. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like, I was like, I already finished this. And it was not that they were giving me a bad critique or anything. It was like actually very helpful advice had I not been done with the painting for like a month. And I was like, shit. So that was the most recent one that was like, you know, but okay. What about, what was the other one? <laughs> Worst or silly. What? I think I did Worst that. Worst or silly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. But yeah. Um, <laughs> and was like, oh, this line. <gasps> I think college was like so long ago. I don't remember any other critique, to be honest. Yeah. Kelsey, but, you know if you ever feel like branching out or does figuration still have your heart? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, figuration definitely has my heart. Obviously I'm, this feels like branching out to me a little, even though it is like a still life, which is like figurative in its uh, own way. But I, there's nothing like painting skin. And honestly, there's nothing like painting like little tiny hairs. There's something that's really satisfying about it. I think I'll, I'll never, there, there won't be anything close to that. Um, I, I, I used to do kind of like abstract stuff, but I wasn't, um, again, it was like very aimless, I think. Um, and it didn't really click. I just, I just felt like I had wanted to like move my hand. Um, so I, I made abstract or whatever, you know, kind of images just so I can like paint something. And I, I think they never really worked. And I think it's cause I, I I love making figurative paintings because they make sense to me and and like I'm I think I'm able to <laughs> physically so mm -hmm. I I wish like I could I mean I you know it takes great talent I think to paint from your head it's really wild to me it really is like I'm like you know look at a picture put the picture down. <laughs> I definitely think it's like a an interesting like left brain right brain divide even among artists different different types of brains in there yeah for sure i'm definitely someone has described me before as a type a so i don't know i'm like i guess it's like wanting law and order in my life <laughs> even though like i am a very chaotic messy person like i i need to be in control of it so i Maybe that's where I like I played piano for like 11 years, like when I was a kid, but I was always like really, it's always mechanical. I can never do that thing where you just like make up compositions. Like it just wasn't, it's not how my brain works, I think. So, yeah. Kelsey's got another, another heavy hitter. Uh, do you ever think about your alignment with narrative work? Uh, she says she feels like your figurative work is very different from a lot of contemporary figure work that she sees uh, because mm -hmm. you ground everyone in really detailed scenes. Yeah. What was the first part of the question? <laughs> <laughs> do you ever think about your alignment with narrative works? And uh, it kind of reminds me at the beginning of the call, you were mentioning how um, like with this scene, like it is a, it is a memory and it all brings back. So, um, I guess figures and narrative. Yeah, it. totally. Yeah. I think, um, painting little details and, and you know, is of a body, I, I think is really interesting and contrasts like my idea that, um, each memory is like foggy or sometimes fake. Like I can, you know, pretend I know the memory of something and be completely wrong, but then. I paint it in such detail that it's like I'm convincing myself I have the right idea. I, I remember the correct story. So like kind of really digging into the picture at the same time, I'm adding my own narrative to what the, the picture is a picture of, but also, I don't know, but also like learning from it and uh, detracting from its original meaning or its original you know, my original thought when taking the photo. That sentence was so bad. 
<laughs> but yeah, I, I think I think I like to uh, I like to dig for meaning in things that may may not have had any meaning at all when taking them. I think it's interesting to just like you know upon just like really digging into a painting, it's like I'm reworking it so much that it's like a whole new memory. Um, and then it's like I've created it rather than it having been created. And I'm the one who gets to dictate like what the painting is about. And when you take a picture, it kind of either tells you um, or just kind of like maybe to some just, it's just a picture and that's it. But when you turn it into a painting, I think it's interesting to think about changing your memory and telling yourself what you want to hear and, you know. Awesome. Kelsey says that sentence made sense. <laughs> oh, thank you. I am like so insanely nervous, even though I know like literally everybody in this chat. So <laughs> I feel like I'm just going to be like doing great. ranting a lot. Oh, oh thanks. That's what we're here for. <laughs> Just yeah, I am um, watching you make those lines. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Oh, man, we're almost at like an hour. That's like so wild. <laughs> Guys, I did four square. <laughs> Was this fun for you to watch? <laughs> I'm loving it. Let's see if I can finish all four in this time. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, this is actually a pretty good example of like how long my time lapse is actually. <laughs> It'll be kind of like a couple of hours condensed into 30 seconds, which makes it seem like, you know, it's like really fucking easy for me, but it's actually, it's a long one. And so I, I gave myself this project and I'm going to finish it. And I probably won't sleep for a while because every little line is like one minute. So but yeah. Do you have a least favorite part of being an artist? Um, just in general. Yeah, totally. Being poor is dumb. But um, uh, yeah, being poor is stupid. And then um, pricing my work is the worst. And I hate it. And um, that's about it, though. The Basically, the lo logistical side, like the organizational skills in terms of like, you know, like applying for things. I like actually writing about my work. That aspect I do like, but applying and sending my paintings to galleries and giving them a price tag and hoping it's right and, and hoping I'm getting enough or that I'm not asking for too much. It's like such an embarrassing, weird thing to me that should come naturally. Like I should be able to be like, this is the price and that's just the price, but it just isn't like that for me. Um, but everything else I, I like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Holly wants to know what audio book are you listening to right now? Not like right now, right now, but when you paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have the overdrive app, which is, it, you just get free audio books as long as you have a library card and it's amazing. And actually right now I'm in the middle of Obama's new book, A Promised Land, and it's really good. And I'm definitely a professional in politics now because of reading it. So that part's cool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, it's actually, it is a really good book though. And I read Michelle's book too. So it's like really nice to like hear both sides of their stories, but that one's really long. I've actually been listening to it for like a few days, even though like my studio hours recently are like 12 at a time. <laughs> um, but normally I can finish a book in like one or two days. Um, I think I just read, such a fun age and um, American Dirt or Red, listen to audiobook and um, Clap When You Land. And those are all super incredible. Yeah, those are really good. Do you always go for audiobooks or do you ever have any podcasts that you throw in the mix? I definitely do. Yeah, I definitely do podcasts also. It's actually really rare I listen to music. I've been trying to like amp myself up the past couple studio days so I have been listening to music but uh yeah I listen to I love the adventure zone which is um the boys from my brother my brother and me and they they play 
uh, real time Dungeons and Dragons, and it's hilarious. And then I listen to Talk Art, which is these two British dudes that interview artists from like all around the world. Talk Art's amazing. The Great Women Artists is um, this woman who interviews not only like contemporary female artists, but like curators that know like everything about, you know, Louise Bourgeois or Helen Frankenthaler and they're amazing. Uh, they're always incredible interviews. I listen to I Like Your Work podcast and um, oh, This Week in Art, A Brush With, let's see what else we got. Dungeons and Daddies, which is another <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons real-time podcast. Uh, uh, yeah, I have a ton of podcasts to do. I'm like, I absorb so much audio content <laughs> in like one day. It's pretty wild. Uh, Lee wants to know what have been your favorite commissions? Um, uh, the animals. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> the animals. I actually, I painted this, this girl I work with, I painted her uh, her boyfriend and their their baby and that was fun because her, her boyfriend has like this like wild like arm tattoo and that was a ton of fun to paint but for the most part um, I like painting people's animals it's like you can't you know you can't mess up like their expressions are so their expressions that like it's impossible to get it wrong um, it's pretty it's pretty cool but besides that like I don't love doing commissions. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if anyone does, but I, I would love to like, if I were to do commissions, I would always want them to be people or pets. Like I've done kind of like people's like gardens before and like I did it, but it was like, it was a, whole, it was a strange challenge for me, like painting flowers and being floral. And I wasn't a hundred percent convinced that it was as, great as the person said it was so what has been your favorite painting ever of your own not not a commission oh my goodness <laughs> every painting that I'm currently working on is my new favorite painting <laughs> <laughs> every time I make a new painting I like hate every single other one I'm like these are dumb why did I even why did I make these um I don't know if it's my favorite painting or if I just am like misguided by the reception it had but I made the one at the back of Dan's head and his mask is tied and I think I like that one because everyone else like really really likes it and likes to tell me about it and by everyone else I obviously don't mean just like strangers like people I know um not that popular but uh so I'm like yeah that's my favorite I guess but then but in if I'm like being honest it's like right now this one is like my absolute favorite and when I make a new one I'm gonna I'm going to hate it and um, be like, why do you make this? <laughs> Iris says that the detail on that shaved head is what dreams are made of. Oh, yeah. That is actually, I will say, that is so much fun for me to do. I love doing little hairs. And I think the process of, of making a layered painting is like so like, it's something I didn't really start doing until like two years ago even <laughs> like really taking my time and getting down the, the texture of his skin first before I put in any hairs and and then when you finally put the final touches of the hair it is like it's it's satisfying like I I I think painting gives me a satisfaction of my my work ethic and myself that I I can't give myself anywhere else <laughs> except for when I'm like I fucking I did the task I meant to do. I made it look like how I wanted. It's a good feeling. It's rare, <laughs> but it's good. Ooh, you're moving on with those blues. They're gorgeous. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I have three. Well, maybe I have five blues on my palette. I have this, um, this, turquoise or teal I have this teal color and then basically a lighter lighter version of it you know radiant version of it I have cerulean blue this one's cobalt blue which I try it's so expensive I 
I don't use it as much. It's very transparent. It's really expensive, be probably because of like what the pigment is, but it's not like, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty transparent, I'd say. So I, I don't use it as much. And then I've got this phthalo blue and then this Prussian blue. So I, I use a lot of blues. I think when I back up, sometimes I look at my painting, I'm like, oh, I just made another blue painting. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but I, yeah, I guess I, it's not my favorite color or anything, but I definitely love blue. And maybe I just like look at everything and think it's blue. So that's why I use it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I, I put too much blue on my palette. And then I'll never know. But yeah, I, I, I always have a bunch of each color. So obviously like several different types of reds, pinks. I have one very warm yellow, a neutral yellow, and a very cool yellow. And I think it's important to have like that kind of range because when you're mixing you, you, you have to know like if you want to neutralize a color keep it temperature the temperature we talked a little like bit. i could have good i was just gonna say i feel like i could have picked a more interesting part to work on than the <laughs> squares but that's okay what were you gonna say um, I was going to say, we talked a little bit about um, your school. I was wondering about your transition from school to Austin. How how did that go? What was your studio practice like before Contra Common? I know you're here every day now, but what, what happened in between? Yeah, so after college, after I graduated, um, Dan and I went on a like two month long road trip and really loved Austin. So then we moved here because we liked it so much. And um, I was taking photographs in lieu of having space to paint. Um, and it wasn't, yeah, I really wasn't doing the trick. And so after like three years or yeah, I'd say three, after three years, I finally found studio space, maybe two years. And I started working at Pump Project, but they, it was right as they were closing their doors because somebody bought the building and uh, they, would, they were going to have to vacate. But I was, I was ready to take whatever I could get for studio space. So I was there for a few months. And, and then I, when we all lost our studio space, uh, the, the, the very nice people at Mosaic Sound Collective took a few of us in and gave us studio space there. But really, it's like, a building for musicians so it was kind of just like carpeted office rooms and, and that's what I painted in for I think like a whole year until I landed on Contra Common because Kirsten knew you Taylor and also I met you like three times like at events so yeah we just kept on showing near each other and then like yeah splitting off it's so funny and yeah and then it was Russell yeah I I came to see Alex's show because I just saw it on Instagram before I even knew who Alex was. And then Russell was here. And so I was like, Ben was like, oh, Russell's in a studio. Do you want to see him? I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then Russell was like, Taylor, this is Aria. And we're like, wait, we know each other. And then anyway, it was like good. I'm like, I'm very comfortable in this studio. Um, I've definitely worked out of, I mean, Pump Project was really great, but it was just so short lived. Mosaic was, they were so nice to me. They're so accommodating to let a painter paint in their music building for so long, but it just like wasn't, you know, it wasn't a good fit. I was always very conscious about like ruining their carpeting or something. So, mm -hmm. um, Gabby yeah. Wants to know so then I'm here. <laughs> Gabby wants to know if you have a preference on size or scale of your paintings. Yeah, I think the past, like, Hi, Gabby, by the way. <laughs> uh, the, the past few paintings I made, I guess just the past two paintings, and they just took me so long, have been really large. I actually do really like working at this scale. It's obviously, like, it's not manageable to always work large. I'd say I, I would prefer it. It's so much easier than working small, um, regardless of how long it takes. Like, I think the image is more likely to end up the way I want it to. Um, but I most standardly <laughs> use uh, 18 by 24 inch canvases. I feel like that's my most popular canvas size. But if I could, I'd always work large and I'd have all the time in the world to always paint. 
but yeah. Just for all of our guests here, we do have about five more minutes left on our um, installation of on-site here with Aria. So if you guys have any other questions, please put them in the chat um, and we can make sure we get to everybody before we let Aria get back to her show prep. <laughs> Yay! I can also like for the past five, next five minutes, I can kind of, oh, should I do a tour of the painting? Let's see your painting, let's do it. Right. I'm like, <laughs> the last time is going to be like corruption. I'm going to definitely <laughs> drop this camera. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I wonder if you can see well on the screen here. Oh. So this is kind of a section that's like pretty complete. I'll just have to go in and fix like this ellipses or ellipse, whatever it's called, because, you know, um, let's see. I hope this doesn't make people nauseous. This is a section I worked on last night. Here's Dan's crusty socks. Can I see that? <laughs> Dan's crusty socks. And uh, this is the tiny section that it took me an hour to make just now. Um, yeah, and I, I kind of like, I, I'm starting on this side. Let me see, and then going left, my left. This side is all a jumble of second underpainting that will will need to be like highlighted and, and drawn out a little bit but this is the big boy uh yeah that's a pretty good angle you can see it right yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah how big would I'm you very excited yeah how big I'm would sorry you think? I think I interrupted you no you're okay would you say it's like three feet tall by four feet wide or how how big is that yeah, it's 36 by 54, so, like, um, math-wise, yeah, it's, like, three feet by some kind three of feet, like, five. five. And a couple inches, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, so it's, yeah, <laughs> I think it's really important. I, I, I'm excited, like, it's obviously hard to go out and see um, paintings right now, considering like you could just like be sick from going places and you know, dangerous life out there. But <laughs> if like, you know, you're able to like safely like wear your mask and come in and, and be like sanitary and all that good stuff. I think it's going to be awesome to see something like this in person. I think it's really important to like, really like really get the scale. Uh, even in a photo, even if you have like someone standing next to it in a photo and you can like, tell I think um yeah I think it's important to kind of like be able to like you know see little little bits I, I think that's something like I want like my paintings to be kind of like like a maze and, and you don't know where you're going with your eye and then you find something that you like really like and I have another really huge painting that uh will be in the show as well I think they're really cool to stand in front of honestly like it's cool like the other one's like this size times exactly two because it's two canvases that are this exact size like squished together yeah there's something to be said about standing in front of a painting especially a big one so I mean I hope they do for other people what they have done for me upon finishing them and being like yes I did it <laughs> yeah um, I stood in front of the other one and it's fantastic and every time I go in there I find more more things more little hairs on the knee and all the things so Yay! Yeah, yeah. I'm ready that's awesome. for the amazingness that's going to be here for the show. Um, again, yeah. it's something like yesterday. Uh, it's Aria and Sydney Weston Cow. Um, little dual show. It'll open on Saturday, March sixth. We'll have an opening from six to nine. It will be open at noon that day, though. If you wanted to come in a little early, get a sneak peek before. Uh, a hopefully small but good crowd, steady crowd. Um, so make sure y'all come through. Um, we're also going to be open. It'll be open weekends through April 2nd. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So there's a couple, four or five weekends in there for y'all to come through and see some art. Um, and you can always schedule a private appointment at Contra Common as well uh, during the weekday if you want to just uh, hit up our DMs or our email or go to calendly.com slash Contra Common to schedule an appointment. 
Um, you might even get to have your private appointment with Aria if you're lucky. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it'll be so good. Um, we will do another uh, installation of our on-site series. We'll peep into another member studio next week sometime. Not sure who it's going to be. I think it might be Kelsey, um, potentially. Maybe I just volunteered her. I don't know. Um, but we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll put it on the Instagram. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. We got all sorts of great comments in the chat, um, and it's been a pleasure to have you, Aria, in the in the, the hot seat and the hot minutes leading up to your show next week. So, oh. yeah, dude, thank you for hosting. This was dope. I'm sorry I couldn't finish more than six squares. I didn't even like honestly realize how slow I am at painting. So. Well, we had you distracted with lots of questions to answer. So I'd say I'd say, I'll say that. Kind of, yeah, you're fine. <laughs> <Great. laughs> Yay! Yeah, but. The show will be great. Like, honestly, I've been to the past few openings here at Contra Common and everyone's wearing a mask. Like every, you know, every glass of wine is only enjoyed outside away from people. You know, it, it's, it's very safe. And like you said, Taylor, if you don't want to be around a ton of people, because obviously understand that, like, um, if you come at noon, the gallery will be pretty much empty. Except for a <laughs> It actually, yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> Get a private tour. Awesome. All right, you guys. Hope we'll to see you in person soon. Happy to have had you virtually here as well. Uh, and y'all have a good warm night. Hopefully, all of our Texans back to having power and water. Oh my God. Let us know. If yeah. For you. Have a good night. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs>